Hi, welcome to another video. So, today we're looking at a super practical comparison from the Kilo Code blog, where they ran six AI models through three real world coding problems. And the punchline is simple everyone spotted the issue, but the fixes and the cost profiles were not the same at all, which is kind of cool. Quick roll call GPT 5, OpenAI 03. Claude Opus 4.1, Claude Sonnet 4.5, Grok 4, and Gemini 2.5 Pro. The core value here is a clean, repeatable setup and a pragmatic recommendation for when to pick frontier models versus budget-friendly ones. Basically, what it does is give you a playbook for mission-critical reviews versus bulk scanning, and that's quite awesome. Now, let's move into the walkthrough. So, what Kilo did here is that they built a consistent test harness. First, they took small, risky code snippets, like 10 to 50 lines, and gave every model the same prompt. Fix this. No hints. No leading questions. Then they used a two-phase scoring approach. Phase one was an AI judge using a rubric across correctness, code quality, completeness, safety-minded practices, and performance. Phase two was human validation. Engineers picked what they'd actually merge. I mean, I liked it. Consistent inputs, clear scoring, and a human sanity check at the end. So, there's that. Step one in their analysis was a node.js config merge problem. You've probably seen this in real apps. A deep merge pulls user input straight into a settings object and downstream checks rely on a flag like rec.user. is admin. If you pass a crafted payload with a special property, that admin flag ends up bubbling through prototypes, and suddenly everything looks elevated. It is very similar to classic OWASP patterns you've seen across older CVES and blog posts. Here's the interesting bit. All six models saw the issue, but the spread was in how strong and shippable the fixes were. GPT-5 went layered. Safe base objects with null prototypes, explicit blocking of risky keys, guards like has own property during merges, and even freezing sensitive auth logic to stop side effects. OpenAI 03 was right behind with clean helpers. A clear list of problematic keys, own property checks and auth, and readable comments which I really liked, because you can code review it fast. Claude Sonnet 4.5 also did multi-layer tightening with object dot, create null and key blocking, which is not bad at all. Gemini 2.5 Pro kept it simple, key filtering and null prototypes, but missed some recursive edges. Claude Opus 4.1 leaned into schemas and type checks, solid, but heavier to maintain. Grok 4 mostly focused on filtering and skipped the own property validation on the auth path, which is a bummer. Basically, what it does is show you the difference between good catch and production-ready fix. Now, step two was a modern agent workflow, 2025 style. So, what Kilo did here is chain together a few common pieces. An AI agent fetches a page, the model interprets the content, proposes tool calls to a cloud management API, and a WASM module has file system access. You can see the pattern. A page might include hidden instructions. The model treats it as guidance, proposes a cloud call with sketchy parameters. Your agent runs it with a broad token, and suddenly you've got cross-tenant changes and token exposure paths through the runtime. It is very similar to the OASP LLM01, LLM06, and LLM08 buckets we keep talking about. GPT-5 solution was insanely good. Narrow tool scopes, output gating with a two-man rule confirmation, strict trust boundaries, so credentials never enter model text, sanitization and provenance checks on fetched HTML, and least privilege tokens that are role-based, 
resource-scoped, and short-lived. OpenAI 03 was almost as strong, with a detailed analysis. They even called out shadow tenant-style RBAC stories, response schema validation, and safe WASM configs that drop file system access entirely. Claude Sonnet 4.5 had the right theory, trust boundaries, provenance tracking, gating, but didn't go as deep in implementation. Gemini 2.5 Pro scoped tools and used schema checks, but the gating felt lighter. Claude Opus 4.1 used Zod, Dom Purify, and even diagrammed the flow. Great for understanding, a bit lighter on layers. Grok 4 referenced OWASP AI Top 10 and NIST and used allow lists, but the gating logic was simpler. The takeaway is that when the pattern is newer, reasoning depth matters more than pattern matching, and GPT-5 and O3 pull ahead, which is pretty good. Next, step three was the classic image magic pathway. The setup was an express API that shells out to image magic with font, size, and text dropped directly into a command string. If you put a funky font like Arial semicolon rm-rf slash, your command now includes a surprise guest. It is very similar to the image tragic era pitfalls. GPT-5's fix was comprehensive. Strict allow lists, absolute font paths to dodge special coders like mvg colon, http colon, label at, bans on prefixes like inline colon and caption at, switching to spawn or exec file with argument vectors, no shell, piping text via standard input, plus size and rate caps, and temp file cleanup. Claude Opus 4.1 was thorough too. Spawn, allow lists, size range validation, control character filtering, rate limiting, explicit image magic paths, and demos that help reviewers. Claude Sonnet 4.5 used exec file, strong allow lists, and rate limits. OpenAI 03 switched to exec file concisely with font validation and text sanitization. Gemini 2.5 Pro used spawn with allow lists and clean validation. Grok 4 explained separators like semicolon, pipe, ampersand, backticks, and dollar parents that mess with shell parsing, move to spawn, and validated ranges. Everyone saw the issue. The best ones layered pure arg execution with strict allow lists and bans for tricky routes. So, now let's talk cost, because that's where this becomes a real tool for your PR workflow. Kilo reported a total of around $1.81 to run all three evaluations across six models. The image magic case cost the most because the best answers were long and thorough. The node.js merge case was the cheapest. Average landed around 60 cents per evaluation with roughly 10 cents per model execution. The recommendations were pragmatic. If you're tight on budget and doing bulk scans, Gemini 2.5 Pro or O3 give you 90 to 95% of GPT-5's quality at 72% lower cost, which is kind of cool. If you're touching money, health data, or auth paths, just pay for GPT-5. Layered guardrails are worth it. For broad OASP-style reviews week to week, Claude Sonnet 4.5 hits a nice balance, strong on familiar patterns, and cheaper at scale. Here's the twist I liked most, and why I'd actually run this approach across PRS. The AI judge picked GPT-5 as the best overall based on the rubric. The humans picked O3 for deployment. Why? O3's fixes were simpler, readable in 15 minutes, and still nailed the hard modern stuff. GPT-5 was maximalist, in a good way. But sometimes, you don't want to maintain a fortress when a well-built wall does the job. I thought I'd talk about this as well, because it mirrors real engineering the most perfect solution isn't always the one you want to carry for six months. So, there's that. Including thoughts. Every model spotted the issues, 
which is amazing progress. The difference is in completeness, layered guardrails, and how much you'd actually want to merge and maintain. I really liked that O3 ended up as the human pick because it's pragmatic, strong enough, readable, and cheaper at scale. GPT-5 is what I'd use for critical systems where maximum guardrails make sense. Gemini and Sonnet are the workhorses for day-to-day -day hygiene. Match the model to the mission. Don't chase a single best. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.